you would have to agree that model railroading is quite expensive. Wouldn't you rather spend your hard-earned money on highly detailed models that are running around on top of your layout that you're actually going to enjoy visually instead of a whole lot of electrical components that sit in underneath your model railway? DCC can add a significant amount of money to your model railroad budget. I love nothing more than showing you budget ways of getting the modeler into DCC. Just be mindful, cheap doesn't always mean nasty. Using Arduino controlled model railroad interface or Arkamora, I'm gonna show you how we can use cheap Arduino microprocessors and Arduino relays to control your Circuitron tortoise stall type motors. And this is obviously one way to keep the cost down significantly. Enough of the waffle, let's talk about it. So what we're gonna quickly look at here is all the connections and hardware. So on the face of it, it does look a little bit daunting, but if you break down the connections one by one, it's really not all that daunting at all. And I'll go through it very quickly here. So we've got the, the tortoise, we've got the Mardek, we've got, you need to be able to have some sort of DCC signal. So mine's the Roco Z21. You need the Arduino relay. We need the two separate power supplies, and I'll explain that very, very shortly, how that comes about. And also we need a power supply to fire up the, the power shield or the Mardic here. So sometimes you may need a positive and negative voltage output from a DCC supply for applications such as we did discussing here, and also there's some testing now I won't go deeply into why this is the case, just this is obviously the way that this is actually connected up. Ultimately to do this you need at least two separate DC power supplies or one with a multiple output. Basically what happens is the one with a multiple output which we're going to create here. Sometimes you, there's occasions like this one we're describing today where you need both a positive and a negative voltage from a DC power supply for the application such as this or um, under some testing scenarios also. So what we're gonna need, we're gonna need two separate DC power supplies or one with a multiple output, which is what we're, we don't have today. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna. So when you have the, the two single DC power supplies as shown here, here are some of the suggestions how to get the positive and the negative outputs that you need. So primarily what we're going to look at doing here, we're going to connect the two channel supplies in series configuration. So this is done by connecting one of the power supplies. So let's go power supply A, the negative binding or the negative output to the positive output of power supply B. So this is what we're going to call our reference that can be connected to the ground or the, the, the chassis ground um, under some scenarios. Now that power supply A has an open port, which is positive on this occasion, and B has an open port, which is now negative. So you must be thinking, well, if you put, join those together, wouldn't you be getting some sort of short circuit? No, you won't, because they are separate grounds, so to speak, so they're not gonna short each other out. So then we've got from the, the normally closed of the relay to the negative of, say, we'll call it the, the, the right-hand power supply, and then the normally open goes to the positive of the left power supply. And then we've got the common of the relay off to the left hand side motor input. So now we need to have a ground that comes off the Mardek that goes through to the ground to be able to actuate the Optio coupler. And likewise, we're just gonna pick up the, the positive five volts. And then we've got the control pin. So what we're gonna call that's the input pin number one, which is gonna to go to pin number one of the Mardek. So we'll ex explain all that very shortly, how that's addressed. So then we need the D DCC signal coming in from the Z21. And then as quoted before, we need some sort of power supply to be able to arc up or power up the Mardek, uh, the Mardek shield here. So it does look a little bit daunting, all those wires. Yes, there is a few wires, but if you, as I said, follow them methodically through, the, the connections are really, quite simple. Before we go into the next section, which is just having a brief look at the Mardek and how to program it, we'll get a quick word from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. Over to you guys and girls. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, 
inventor or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCB Way. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with one to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. So we're going to go very, very quickly just through the Mardic interface. Now, in a previous video, I went more in depth into this, so I will put a link to this below. So there's two ways regarding you can get the Mardic. You can either do it the DIY way, which is where you get the, the Uno and you make your own DCC to Arduino interface. I've also done a video on how to make the Arduino interface. So I'll put also put that in the link below. Or you can sort of do a bit of a hybrid like I've done. So what you can actually do is you can use an Arduino Uno, but then you can purchase um, what they call a power shield from Arkamora that uh, it's a very easy circuit to put together, which makes the probably the the integration a little bit a little bit nicer and a little bit cleaner, and for a, for a, a reasonable price also. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to go into what we call the program mode here. So so what we can see here briefly is sixteen ports. So what that actually means is there's sixteen inputs to this Arduino Uno that we can access via this system and program in various ways. Now, I'll, st I'll stick away from port number one at this point in time because that's another one that I'm experimenting with um, for a servo motor. So what we can actually do is we can go into the individual ports. Now, it looks a little bit intimidating, but it really is point and shoot, so to speak. So you can sort of see along the bottom here, we got into the commands. So if you're not sure what any of those commands are, you don't have the, the instruction book, you can just go do a question mark and it tells you basically what you want to know. So first thing we're going to do is P for port because we want to access port number two. So what this is actually telling us, so port number two is currently on DCC address number 14 and it's an accessory type number one, which is single steady. And we don't worry about the other bits not inverted. That's for probably a bit more complex applications. So yet again, if you don't know what all these other codes mean along the bottom here, uh, the M, I, R, T, and A, and follow on, just go to question mark again, and it's gonna tell me what it is. So. We can test the port, we can modify, we can invert, we can change the addresses if that's what you need to do. So that's probably all we're going to do at this point in time. So what I might do is just show you M, which is modification. So now we've got numbers from 0 to 1. And yet again, there's also a help function, which is 0. So if you don't know what they all mean. So we can have single steady is what we want. So that's just one blast of a DCC command, and that's pretty well it. So we can have flickering, we can have flashing, which I've gone to in previous videos. So we're just going to go one on that occasion, single steady. Now, we also wanted to have a look at the address. So we can now, on port number two, do a DCC address between 1 and 2000. So if you want to change yours to, say, number two, number one, whatever, it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to leave mine at 14. So, so at this point, it's very, very important. So basically, if we don't save the port and exit, the programming mode of Mardek, you won't be able to use it. It just won't won't let you fire it off, so to speak. So what you end up having to do is just push E, and you can see how it says it came up very, very quickly with port settings saved. And then from here, we can start controlling it. So I've also, I'll show you in the video coming up about how, what it looks like when we control it with a remote. Okay, so what we've got in here under here is a DR5000, just purely that's my, my test rig. So what we can look at here is we've got within the DR5000 um, a switchboard for the property. So we've brought up address number 14 is what we're looking at. So if we start, so what we're showing you here is we can turn, basically turning that address number 14 on and off. And that's where we get the single steady. So it's just one click, 
turns it on, one click turns it off. So this is what it looks like in the real world. So on the left hand side, we've got the DigiKai's uh, switch interface. And in the inset video is where we've got the video of the point money going back and forth. So as you can see, I'm flicking that, at switching that Arduino on and off, so to speak, using the single shot with the Mardek, which in turn is switching the relay from side to side. So thanks for watching. In short, what we've looked at uh, in this week's video, we've looked at the Arduino hardware and also the Mardek software, so we can cheaply operate our Circuitron Tortoise stall type motors. That's a bit of a mouthful. So in short, what we're doing, we're making a very cheap stationary decoder. Like my, all my other videos, I have three questions. So number one, is this the type of system that you might look at using on your model railway? Number two, if so, how do, would you tweak the Mardek to suit your needs? How could I have put my Mardek together a little bit better? I might have made some mistakes, so please put in the comments below any of your or any of your feedback. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Give it a big massive thumbs up if you think it's a good video. The YouTube algorithm loves the love and we always, we love giving the love to the algorithm just so it'll show me and also YouTube that this is the type of video that you might like watching and put more in front of you. So see you next time.